now let me tell you about what is called as the agonist all right let me tell you about what is called as agonist now based on the intrinsic activity right we classify the drug to be either agonist antagonist inverse agonist or partial agonist now let me tell you about the word agonist remember the agonist is the drug which it will bind to the receptor and activate the drug or activate the receptor maximally that is what is called as the agonist and for the agonist the intrinsic activity is given to be plus one okay so if you take the agonist it will bind to the receptor all right it will bind to the receptor and activates the receptor maximally right activates the receptor maximally that is the intrinsic activity of this particular agonist is plus one that is what is called as the agonist whereas you take the antagonist right so antagonist is exactly opposite to that of the agonist so if you take the antagonist remember antagonist is the drug which binds to the receptor but produces no effect at all right so antagonist is the one which binds to the receptor right which binds to the receptor but produces right but produces no effect that is called as the antagonist now if you take for the antagonist the intrinsic activity is considered to be zero right if you take the antagonist the antagonist the intrinsic activity is considered to be zero that is what is called as the antagonist now remember the agonist is not able to bind to the receptor what i mean to tell you is when antagonist is present in high concentration the antagonist will go and bind to the receptor and then there will be no action of that particular drug all right so in the presence of the antagonist now right in the presence of antagonist now agonist is not able to bind to the receptor right now agonist is not able to bind to the receptor because the receptors are already occupied by the antagonist okay so now the agonist is not able to bind to the receptor because all right because these are right because these are already occupied by antagonist right because these are already occupied by the antagonist now let me tell you the next point now what i want to tell you is thus the antagonist decreases the action of the agonist but itself has no effect right so what is your antagonist doing antagonist decreases the action of agonist all right the antagonist decreases the action of the agonist but itself has no effect right but itself has no effect that is what is called as your antagonist all right now let me tell you the definition of another important term that is called as the partial agonist right let me tell you the definition of another important term which is called as the partial agonist now if you take this particular word partial agonist it activates the receptor but sub maximally right it activates the receptor right but sub maximally this is what is called as the partial agonist now for the partial agonist right for the partial agonist if you take the intrinsic activity the intrinsic activity is between 0 and plus 1 right the intrinsic activity is between 0 and plus 1 that is what is the intrinsic activity for the partial agonist now if you take the partial agonist remember it will produce the similar effect right it will produce the similar effect in the absence of the agonist right what i want to tell you here is the partial agonist will produce the similar effect as that of the agonist right 
it will produce the similar effect in the absence of the agonist but it will decrease the effect of the pure agonist i'll tell you an example for this okay so what i want to tell you here is the partial agonist it will produce similar effect right similar effect of the agonist but it will right but it will reduce or it will decrease the effect of right it will decrease the effect of the pure agonist right it will decrease the effect of the pure agonist that is what is your partial agonist now let me tell you an example here for example you take the drug that is pindalol remember the pindalol it is one of your beta blocker the pindalol it has the partial agonistic activity at the beta 1 receptors right it's a beta blocker what it will do is it will go and bind to the beta 1 receptor and it will antagonize the beta 1 receptor all right so pindalol it has the partial agonistic activity at the beta receptors right partial agonistic activity at the beta 1 receptors okay now now in the presence of the pure agonist right what are the examples of the pure agonist of your beta 1 receptors the pure agonist they include like adrenaline and noradrenaline so in the presence of the agonist like adrenaline and noradrenaline it will produce the antagonistic effect right it will produce the antagonistic effect that is it decreases the heart rate but even in high doses it does not result in severe bradycardia due to some agonistic action all right so listen here very clearly don't get confused pindalol it is the beta blocker right it is actually a beta blocker it has a partial agonistic action right it has a partial agonistic action now what i am trying to tell you here what is a partial agonist the partial agonist is the one which will stimulate the receptor but submaximally right submaximally here the intrinsic activity is between 0 and as well as plus 1 and this particular partial agonist will produce the similar effect of the agonist but it will decrease the effect of the pure agonist now the example is the pindalol the pindalol it is the partial agonist of the beta 1 receptor now in the presence of the pure agonist right in the presence of the pure agonist what are the pure agonist like adrenaline right adrenaline and as well as noradrenaline it will produce in the presence of the pure agonist that is adrenaline and noradrenaline it will produce the antagonistic action right it will produce antagonistic action which one will produce antagonistic action the pindalol will produce the antagonistic effect that is what i want to tell you is this pindalol it decreases the heart rate but even in high doses it does not cause very severe bradycardia why because the pindalol has partial agonistic activity for the beta 1 receptor now what will happen when the beta 1 receptors are stimulated let me tell you the story here remember the beta 1 receptors they are present in the heart right beta 1 receptors they are present in the heart when this particular beta 1 receptors are stimulated right when this beta 1 receptors are stimulated then remember there is increase in the heart rate of the individual whereas if this beta 1 receptors are antagonized then the heart rate of the individual decreases all right when beta 1 receptors are stimulated the heart rate increases when beta 1 receptors are antagonized then the heart rate decreases now what is your pindalol pindalol is neither your pure agonist nor the pindalol is a pure antagonist what is pindalol pindalol is a partial agonist what that means what it will stimulate the receptor but submaximally right it will stimulate the receptor but it will stimulate the receptor submaximally that means the intrinsic activity is in between 0 and plus 1 so in the presence of the pure agonist 
what the partial agonist will do remember in the presence of the pure agonist like adrenaline and noradrenaline remember adrenaline and noradrenaline for your beta 1 receptors they are the pure agonist in the presence of the pure agonist like adrenaline and noradrenaline the partial agonist will produce the antagonistic effect right the partial agonist will produce the antagonistic effect what is that antagonistic effect antagonistic effect means the pindalol which is a beta blocker will block the beta receptor and it will reduce the heart rate but what i want to tell you here is when you are giving a beta blocker in high dose it should produce bradycardia that is decrease in the heart rate but in spite of giving high doses of the pindalol it will not produce severe bradycardia because the pindalol has some agonistic activity that is the reason why even in high doses there will be no severe bradycardia right so but even in high doses right even in high doses it will not produce right it will not produce severe bradycardia because of the presence of partial agonistic activity right because of the presence of the partial agonistic activity all right so that is what is called as your partial agonist now let me discuss about what is called as the inverse agonist so before going into the discussion of the inverse agonist let me shortly revise here you take the agonist the agonist is the substance which binds to the receptor and it will produce the effect maximally the intrinsic activity is plus one for the agonist now you take the antagonist antagonist it binds to the receptor but produces no effect that means the intrinsic activity is zero now in the presence of antagonist the agonist is not able to bind to the receptor because the receptors are already occupied by the antagonist thus remember the antagonist decreases the action of the agonist but itself it has no effect and you take the partial agonist partial agonist it activates the receptor submaximally where the intrinsic activity is in between 0 and plus 1 it will produce the similar effect in the absence of the agonist but it will decrease the effect of the pure agonist example the pindalol it has the partial agonistic activity at beta 1 receptor and in the presence of the pure agonist like adrenaline and noradrenaline it will produce the antagonistic effect that is it decreases the heart rate but even in high doses it does not result in severe bradycardia due to some agonistic action